Did you know that a typical car engine contains over 200 moving parts? Or that some high-performance engines can generate over a thousand horsepower? What makes these powerhouses of transportation so fascinating? History of the Internal Combustion Engine In 1859, Eddie and Lenore built one of the first practical engines running on coal gas. In 1876, Nicholas Otto invented the four-stroke engine, which became the foundation for modern car engines. Carl Benz then used Otto's engine design to build the first gasoline-powered car in 1855. Yeah, By the early 20th century, cars with internal combustion engines became widespread, revolutionizing transportation. Step 1. The Foundry Our journey into the heart of engine manufacturing begins in the foundry, a place where raw materials are transformed into the building blocks of our engine through heat, precision, and engineering expertise. Traditionally, car engine blocks were made of iron, a material prized for its strength, durability, and excellent heat dissipation properties. Iron engine blocks were the industry standard for decades, powering everything from family sedans to high-performance sports cars. However, as the automotive industry faced increasing pressure to improve fuel efficiency and reduce emissions, manufacturers began to look for alternatives. Enter aluminum alloy the material of choice for most modern engine blocks. But why the switch? Well, aluminum is roughly one-third the weight of iron. While iron's good at handling heat, aluminum is actually superior in dissipating it. And aluminum naturally forms a protective oxide layer, making it more resistant to corrosion than iron. In the modern automotive foundry, massive furnaces roar as they melt aluminum ingots at temperatures reaching a scorching 800 degrees Celsius. The sight of molten aluminum flowing like a river of liquid metal is moved and stored in a large container. Step 2. Molding With our molten aluminum prepared, we move to one of the most crucial stages in engine block production, molding. This step is where the liquid metal begins to take the shape of the engine block, and it requires a delicate balance of ancient techniques and modern technology. The primary method used for creating engine blocks is sand casting, a technique that's been refined over centuries. However, the sand used in modern automotive foundries is far from ordinary. It's a specially formulated mixture, often composed of zircon sand, resin which acts as a glue, and a hardener. This mixture is designed to withstand the intense heat of molten metal while maintaining its shape with high precision. Once the sand has filled the mold box, a gas is injected to activate the hardener in the sand mixture. This chemical reaction causes the sand to solidify rapidly, creating a perfect negative impression of the engine block. Now comes one of the most crucial and fascinating parts of the process, pouring the molten aluminum. Contrary to what one might expect, the aluminum isn't simply poured in from the top of the mold. Instead, it's carefully introduced from the bottom through channels called gates. As the molten aluminum fills the mold, it's not simply left to cool on its own. The cooling rate is carefully controlled, often using a combination of air cooling and water jackets around the mold. This controlled cooling is crucial for achieving the desired microstructure in the metal, which directly affects the strength and durability of the finished engine block. Step 3. Machining Once the engine block has cooled and solidified, it's time for some precision work. The raw casting is good, but it's not quite ready for prime time. This is where high-tech machinery comes into play. First up is the 3D scanner. This scanner is a highly sophisticated piece of equipment that checks every nook and cranny of the engine block against design specifications. The scanner can detect variations as small as a few micrometers. That's less than the width of a human hair. This level of precision is crucial because even the tiniest deviations at this stage 
could lead to significant problems once the engine is assembled and running. Blocks that fall outside of the acceptable tolerance range are set aside for further inspection or recycling. One of the most critical machining operations is the boring and honing of the cylinder walls. This casting process leaves these walls rough and slightly undersized. The boring process uses a rotating cutting tool to enlarge the cylinders to their near final size, leaving a small amount of material for the honing process. While the cylinders are being perfected, other parts of the block are also being machined. The top surface of the block, the deck, is milled perfectly flat to ensure a good seal with the cylinder head. Bolt holes are drilled and tapped to attach various components. Oil galleries, the passages that carry lubricating oil through the engine, are drilled with exacting precision. As the machining process nears completion, the block undergoes a thorough cleaning process. High-pressure water jets and ultrasonic cleaning baths remove all traces of metal chips and cutting fluids. This cleaning is crucial because any leftover debris could cause significant damage once the engine's running. Step 4. Component Manufacturing while the engine block's being perfected, a symphony of manufacturing unfolds across the factory floor. Here, the vital organs of our engine come to life, each component a marvel of engineering in its own right. Let's start with the pistons, the tireless workers of the engine world. These aluminum powerhouses are designed to withstand extreme heat and pressure, moving up and down millions of times over the engine's lifetime. Once the basic piston shape is formed, it undergoes extensive machining. The outer surface is precisely shaped to match the cylinder bore, with enough clearance to allow for thermal expansion. Grooves are cut to hold the piston rings, which will seal against the cylinder walls. The underside of the piston is often contoured to reduce weight and improve strength. Connected to these pistons are the aptly named connecting rods. Typically forged from high-strength steel, they need to be incredibly strong to withstand the forces of combustion, yet light enough to allow for high-speed engine operation. Now, let's talk about the crankshaft, the unsung hero of engine power. This robust piece of machinery is responsible for converting the up and down motion of the pistons into the rotational force that eventually turns your car's wheels. Creating a crankshaft is an art form in itself. It starts as a solid piece of forged steel which is then machined to exact tolerances. Once the basic shape is achieved, the crankshaft goes through a fascinating balancing procedure. The crankshaft is cradled in a special machine that spins at a dizzying 500 to 600 revolutions per minute. As it spins, sophisticated computers analyze its movement, detecting even the slightest wobble. We're talking about imbalances smaller than the width of a human hair. Last, but certainly not least, we have the cylinder head. The cylinder head is a complex piece, housing the valves and springs that control the flow of air and fuel into the engine, as well as the exhaust gases out of it. Manufacturing a cylinder head requires a combination of casting and precision machining, with multiple quality checks along the way to ensure every surface and channel is perfectly formed. Each of these components, the pistons, connecting rods, crankshaft, and cylinder head undergoes rigorous testing before being approved for assembly. Step 5. Assembly. Now comes the exciting part, bringing all these components together to create a working engine. This is where skilled technicians and advanced robotics work in harmony. First, the crankshaft is carefully lowered into the engine block and secured. Then, the pistons, complete with their connecting rods, are gently pushed into the cylinder bores. This is done by using air pressure to ensure they slide in smoothly without damaging the carefully machined surfaces. Next comes the cylinder head. This is where precision really matters. A specialized robot takes over this crucial step. Over a five-minute process, it carefully places and torques down each bolt in a specific sequence. But it doesn't just tighten them all at once. 
the robot actually tightens, loosens, and then re-tightens the bolts. As the engine moves down the assembly line, more components are added. Rocker arms, push rods, and valve covers are all carefully installed. Each engine type might require slightly different components, so the technicians need to pay close attention to ensure the right parts go inside the right engines. Step 6. Testing the engine is assembled, but our journey isn't over yet. Now comes one of the most critical steps, testing. Each engine needs to prove itself before it can be shipped out. The completed engine is taken to a testing bay, where it's connected to a dynamometer. This machine simulates the conditions the engine will face in a car, allowing technicians to measure its performance. The engine roars to life, and for the next few minutes, it's put through its paces. Power output, fuel efficiency, and emissions are all carefully monitored. Only engines that meet or exceed specified performance criteria make the cut. Think about it. This might be the first and only time this particular engine runs before it's installed in a vehicle. 